Welcome readers. Today on Book Chat, we are sharing our second part of the summer event, Top Shelf Book Battle. This go around, we are talking about why a dystopia. We are sharing some of our top reads in this genre. Stay tuned. Today's episode is sponsored in part by Amazon Music. Check it out. It has 70 million songs, thousands of playlists. You can listen without commercials. Sign up today and get your first month for free using the Shelf Addiction link. Go to getamazonmusic.com forward slash shelf addiction and sign up today. Again, the code is Shelf Addiction. The link is also in the show notes. Hey everyone, I'm your host, Tamara Ford, and welcome to Book Chat here on the Shelf Addiction Podcast. Participate in this discussion by joining the Facebook group, Shelf Addiction Official. I hope to hear your thoughts on today's topic. You can always find me and Casey on Twitter and Instagram. The links for everything I've mentioned are below in the show notes. If you enjoyed today's episode, please support this podcast by sharing it with some book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. That would really help me out, and I appreciate you for doing so. The uncut video version of this podcast is available now on Patreon. Join us there for exclusive videos, including after shows and more. So if you're interested in that at all, you'll need to come on over to Patreon and sign up. Without further ado, let's get started. We've got a lot to cover today, so we are going to jump right on. And joining me is feature co-host Casey from Heart Full of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. Yay, I'm glad you're here. Because today we are talking about why a dystopia. <laughs> yes, we are doing another battle, a uh, top shelf battle of the books, and we are going to do it with why a dystopia titles. Mm-hmm. So we're going to jump in and just start chatting about it. What do you think about why a dystopia? Tell me all the things. I either really love it or really hate it, you know, like most things. For a while, I was definitely reading a lot of them. And because, you know, it was the hot thing, what, 10 years ago after the Hunger Games came out and everybody's like, ah, dystopia. Um, So, yeah, no, there are some really good books out there. There There's some really weird books out there. There There's some interesting takes on books out there, like The Selection by Kira Cass, not to just start naming names, but that was a little weird and out there. I'm just going to say that. Did you ever read it? I didn't. And that one was on my list for a long time. But to be honest, I just, you know, I don't know, maybe Mm -hmm. last year or the year before I did a cleanup of my TBR on Goodreads and I removed it because I think I couldn't get past the stupid gowns. I'm like, what is this exactly? So... So it's basically (laughs) like The Bachelor meets YA dystopian meets like Cinderella or something. I just read the first book. And yes, everybody's always talking about the gowns, but the descriptions weren't that good. And it was just The Bachelor, but also the world is fucked and like apples are super scarce, but they're eating fruit anyway. And I don't know, like it's been a while since I was read it. And it was just... I wouldn't necessarily ever stick that in dystopian, but Mm -hmm. like it feels like a Barbie doll book in YA dystopia and it just doesn't mesh and it didn't click for me. So sorry to anybody who did like it. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I get it. I just, I think I was coming off of reading a few not so good ones and I'm like, I don't Mm -hmm. know if I can do this. And to be honest, it was kind of, trendy I think Mm -hmm. they were really hot for a minute and I think maybe it was about two years of me reading heavy YA dystopia and then I was kind of like okay I'm moving on I'm kind of over it now yeah no it was there were some good ones and there were some weird ones and yeah it was a hot thing which you know was mostly started by the Hunger Games as we recently discussed in our last podcast Yes, and we are like, at, like it's kind of an accident that we're kind of getting back into why dystopia on the podcast, uh-huh. but it's happening more or less because you haven't read some of the stuff. I haven't. Yeah. yeah, I have my own list of dystopian that I've read, but they're not usually the big popular ones. Like, yeah, I just read The Hunger Games for the first time. I haven't read Divergent yet, 
So that's on our list of things to read. Um, yeah, no, it's it was a hot topic, but it's always good to revisit the good ones. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like after we do Divergent, um, you need to tell me what I need to read and we need to do something like that. <laughs> because I'm like, okay, we might just dystopia ourselves out after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we, we need to pace ourselves. Yeah, Maybe I'll sure. find some contemporary romances for you to struggle with. Oh, <laughs> Lord knows if it's too if it's too ridiculous, I'm gonna be like eye rolls, mac and lips, the whole nine. I can't take it. Oh, yes. <laughs> but I do like dystopia overall, and I still like it. Like if you guys listen to that episode, I was like defending the Hunger Games on that mm-hmm. episode. <laughs> it held up Which for me, fair. and I still liked it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was really interesting hearing your takes on it, and it definitely changed my opinion. Because I respect you as a reader and you had a completely different point of view from me. And that's why I love our conversations. Yeah. So not to tangent there, but yes, go listen to us. Yes. So about YA Dystopia, I'm curious to see yeah. what, what books made your list that you liked. Because as we mm-hmm. did with last month, we're doing a top shelf battle. So we guys are, we're just yes. kind of giving you some things to chew on because I feel like... Um, we didn't have enough variety last month. So we're mm-hmm. going to give you, we're going to throw some things at you and maybe you'll be like, Oh yeah, I forgot that was good. Oh yeah. This, Oh yeah. That. <laughs> and then you'll want to come so. and put your hat in for your favorite. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. What's, what's one of the ones that you really remember enjoying a lot. So my top pick is the pledge by Kimberly Deering. It is, is a trilogy that came out in, I think, 2011. So it's been a while. But in this dystopian world, the um, population class systems are based on language. And you Mm -hmm. are only supposed to know the language of your class. So the poor people speak this language. The middle class people speak this language. The really rich upper class speak this other language. And there's no crossover. There's no way anybody from the poor class could talk to anybody from a richer class. Like you're very stuck. There's no room for growth, except our heroine has this ability to understand any language. Mm. So she can go around and listen and hear anybody from any sector anywhere, you know, and understand what they're saying. Um, and it's just, again, book nerds, literary nerds, if you like language, it's one of those things that's just like, holy shit, you know, language is a huge barrier, even today with English and America being like, we only speak English and the rest of the world's like, okay, well, we'll learn English so we can understand you and work with you, but you know, we won't return the same. So it, it was... It's been, you know, since 2011 when I read the books, but I just, I remember loving it and devouring those books and the whole trilogy. I remember being satisfied with the ending, but I could not tell you what happens in the third book. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, yeah. That one sounds interesting. I definitely interesting. need to reread it. It was yeah. highly recommend. Don't remember the plot very well. <laughs> it's been a full decade, but highly recommend. Yes. So my... I think top slot and it's something it's not another, it's not a popular one either. Mm -hmm. I think it had a good amount of, um, you know, people reviewing it and stuff, but it definitely Mm -hmm. isn't a something people recognize right off. And it's a duology. And the first book is not a drop to drink by Mindy McGinnis. I remember that cover. I always wanted to read it because of that cover, but I never picked it up. It was so good to me. I thought it was so good to like the women were strong and you guys know, I love strong women mm-hmm. in the book. Mm-hmm. Even when the girl was young, you know, the girl is young. She's YA, right? But she's not like doubtful. She's like, mm-hmm. okay, the pond's dried up. We don't have any snow. People are, you know, cannot drink water. How are we going to get to some water? What do we do? <laughs> and, mm-hmm. you know, she developed like a character 
like I haven't seen in a long time. I just mm-hmm. really remember how quickly she evolved and I'm like, wow, she's no joke. <laughs> and I also like a realistic ending. And the first book was a realistic ending. I made a note of that. It was kind of had a sad tone to it, but it was like, Mm -hmm. "Mm." and I like that as well. And I think that's one of the things I enjoy about McGinnis, her writing. Mm -hmm. I actually read several books from her after this. I was never disappointed. It's amazing. Side note, I know it's not about YA dystopia, (laughs) but this author has written across so many genres. Uh huh. And it's all good. I have never Ooh. come across another author that can write a historical mystery, a YA dystopia, a current day, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? She's all over the place yeah. with her genre, but everything that I've read, I've enjoyed. That's amazing. Yeah. So definitely check out Not a Drop to Drink. Um, because, mm-hmm. you know, it's about this water scarcity and it's real and protecting mm-hmm. your water, protecting your land, you know, traveling to find water. Um, yeah. All that stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's good. So my next recommendation is Legend by Marie Lu. It is another dystopian, obviously. And... Um, it's kind of so Marie Lu is Asian and I want to say she's Chinese, but I'm not a hundred percent sure that's her actual heritage. So please correct me if I'm wrong listeners. Um, but I know there's a lot of Asian influence in her book. And so in this book, um, it, it, it's been a while, but like the government is controlling the country, you know, And so it's told in a dual point of view with one character who's fairly high up in the army system. And, you know, they're controlling the population. They're determining who can do what. Um, They're, you know, the army. It's not, Mm -hmm. they're indoctrinated. And the other point of view is from a character who's like, basically like the Robin Hood of this world she has a high um bounty on her head like she's the second highest bounty everybody's constantly looking for her she's doing everything she can to disrupt and bring down the government and it's just just such a fun and interesting story because when they cross paths you know how do you how do you correlate your two totally different views and your personalities? And, you know, the one person's like, I should turn you in. And the other person's like, bring down the government. And it's, it's a a YA dystopian romance. So how does that work out too? And it's just excellent. And she's written a bunch of other books too. I Mm -hmm. don't know how many of them are dystopian, but legend, legend is my favorite. Okay. And that too was on my list, but I didn't, Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I love the cover art. I thought it was really cool because there wasn't a Mm -hmm. person on it. There wasn't a girl on the front. I'm like, oh, I like these covers. It looks really interesting, but I never, never got to it. Hmm. Okay. So my next one is like one that I thoroughly enjoyed these books. And at first I didn't consider them dystopia, but they totally are. So I'm talking about the Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. Yes, I love that series. Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. So humans and androids and what makes it dystopia is there's like a deadly plague that's going on. And it's just the best thing ever. And I love how she did like a twist on a fairy tale on top of that. So you got retellings and androids and humans and death and, you know, mean people. It's great. (laughs) It has like all the elements that you. Yes. Yeah. And every book is a different retelling. And honestly, my favorite was Scarlet. Like I just love Scarlet. Little Blood Riding Hood. Oh, I love that. That whole series was really, really good. I love Scarlet. It was good. And actually, I appreciate, like, I read um, the prequel, which is Fairest. I Ooh, loved I haven't read that it. yet. I loved it. And this is because, you know, um, Queen Levana is the villain 
right? Mm -hmm. And I love that she wrote a prequel that tells you how she became a villain without making Mm -hmm. you feel differently about her. Like, no, that bitch is bad. She's bad. Like, that sucks. That's why I was holding off on it, because I didn't want her to get redeemed. I didn't want to start caring about her. She does not get a redemption story. It's like, you understand, like, damn, that was kind of fucked up, but damn, you're even more fucked up because of what you (laughs) did, you know? (laughs) So... (laughs) It's like, I love that. It's so awesome. And it's like, for once, I got a really interesting story. And I did not want to be like, oh, well, the villain's excused because of A, B, and C. Yeah. No, I love that. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. It's okay, really I'll good. have to check out Ferris. But yeah, yes. no, I love, I love Marissa Meyer. I love that whole, not trilogy, four book series. Four book arc. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so my next recommendation kind of falls outside of the YA realm. And again, I read this book when I was maybe 14 or 15. Don't remember the name of the book. Don't remember the author. I remember it had a white cover. So this is just me rambling because that's how I do it. Um, this book is actually about after the vampires take over earth. So I want to say something happened in like world war one or world war two and the vampires came out and they took over humanity. And so now all humans are just, you know, blood slaves. They're Mm. grown in farms. They're like cows. They're raised, they're bred, they're drained. Um, And vampires are just out here living their best lives no fear of vampire hunters, no fear of being caught or whatever, because there's no humans left to do anything other than be fed on. And so the book takes place, you know, modern day vampires have been in control for several decades. The food is slowly dwindling. Like there's getting to be less and less because they can't breed the humans fast enough or they eat them too quickly or whatever. And it's told from the point of view of this male vampire who's like maybe a hundred years old. So he's quote unquote young. Um, And it starts with him one day finding a human child. She's like maybe five or six and she somehow escaped from a farm and he sees this child and he knows that he should immediately, you know, either eat her or take her back to the farm or whatever But for some reason, he can't like he has empathy for the first time in his immortal life. And um, so he takes the child back to his apartment and he secretly raises this human child in this vampire world. And I am so mad at myself that I can't remember the name or any like it, it has a white cover. And maybe mm-hmm. it's called Vamp or something. Like, that's all I know. Okay. I feel like the weird person who goes into a bookstore is like, I don't remember the name, but it had a white cover. <laughs> what, what can you tell me about white cover books? <laughs> and they go to the shelf and they're like, you mean out of these thousand books that have white covers? Yes. <laughs> a thousand books. It came out. I don't know. I read it 15 years ago. It wasn't new then. I don't know when it came. Like, it was just so interesting. So I'm going to try and Google and Goodreads. And if I ever find it, I'll tell you guys in the group on Facebook. Because I just, yeah, no, we were talking about dystopian books. And I was Googling the YA dystopian. That one came back to my mind, just, you know, out of the blue. And that was one of the things that I always loved about dystopian books is that it doesn't have to be the same. It doesn't have to be the government is controlling us. You know, it could be we're out of water. It could be the Hunger Games. It could be vampires have taken over the world. And look, it's not everything they wanted. And now they're going to slowly die out because they ate too fast and what can you do when you don't have humans except maybe try and grow your own human, but how does that work out for you? And so it was just one of those that was like, I always remember it 
but I don't remember anything else. It sounds it. good to me because that's a, it's that mm-hmm. blend that I like. Like my next recommendation has that kind of blend where it's like fantasy and dystopia. And it's mm-hmm. like a lot of the times when you think of dystopia, you do think Hunger Games, Divergent, Maze Runner. Like there's nothing supernatural going on in those. But mm-hmm. I love when they blend them. And I think this series did it really well. It's called um, Penryn and the End of Days. And people otherwise call it the Angel Fall series by Susan E. This came out in 2012. I think I read it in 2012 or 2013. It's a trilogy. Mm-hmm. And it's about like <clears throat> the story starts six weeks after Angels of the Apocalypse descend to demolish the world oh my god (laughs) yes and the coolest thing about it is that these angels are like scary as fuck like these angels are scary Mm -hmm. the world is a little dark things are a little disturbing Mm -hmm. you know it kind of feels more like hell than anything else and Mm -hmm. i'm like I'm down for it. Like, this was a very unique and different type of story where you still get all the feelings of dystopia. You know why, you know, the world is crumbling. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like, wow, these supernatural creatures, how do you explain this? Like, flesh-eating monsters, there's a resistance, there's, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, there's a lot going on. It's great. That sounds it's amazing. Great. And the cover art is beautiful. Yeah. Like the first cover, they have like this, um, looks like, I guess it could be angel wings. And then like one cover, mm-hmm. it has another kind of angel wings. And the third cover, like one has like kind of sharp ends and then one has gold. And it's like, oh, so cute. The cover art is beautiful. The story was interesting. I definitely recommend it. If you want to try your hand at angels. Oh. Yes, and paranormal. Please. There's yeah. so many, not to tangent too much, but there's so many angel books that, you know, take different takes on angels. And usually the angels are dicks. Mm-hmm. And Supernatural, for anybody who loves that show, you know, the angels are massive dicks. Yeah. There's other uh, paranormal romance books where the authors, you know, you think you're supposed to hate the demons because the demons are so bad. And then all of a sudden you meet the angels and uh, yeah. So I personally love that trope when the angels are just flaming dicks and you don't know (laughs) what to do about it. You're like, but you're supposed to be an angel. Why are you like this? You're supposed (laughs) to be good. What's happening here? And it's just, yeah, no. Yeah, there's bad angels that. and badder angels and some that mm-hmm. are morally gray. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. No, I love that. Yeah, me too. Like, who wants those goody two-shoes angels? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> yeah. Do you have another? I do not. But I know there's like okay. a ton of popular ones out there that I could try and remember. Unless you have and- more that you just want to go talk well, you know, I can say, and I think I have one that is like really people reacted really badly to it because Uh-oh. of the stupid adaptation. They watched this dumb adaptation that was the worst ever and they made assumptions about this book. And I am like uh-huh. kind of ashamed to admit that I really liked it, but I really liked it. And that is The Host by Stephanie Meyer. I really liked The Host. The book, the movie was awful. It is dystopia. It is science fiction. It's like aliens come and take over the world. They take over. Uh Like they replace their consciousness with alien consciousness. And it's a story that's like not one you see every day. It's very different. I thought it was Uh well executed. To be fair, I read it in 2013. I don't know how I would (laughs) feel about it in 2021. But back then, I was down for it. It was long. It was over 600 pages. Mm -hmm. But I was there for it. And I was, like, surprised that she was able to put out something that was non-vampire. It made Mm -hmm. sense. But she she did. I was waiting for a second book, but it never came. No, I've heard so many people recommend it. And I stayed away because Stephanie Meyer. And I just didn't think that she could pull anything off. Yeah, it's different. Never watched the movie Um, either, but... 
Oh, I yeah, have don't a watch recommendation. the recommendation. Don't. No, no. Don't do it. It's just going <laughs> to drag you down and you're going to be like, if the book is like this, oh my God, I cannot. And you know, <laughs> just they wrecked it. They wrecked it. They tried though. But. Okay. You mentioned aliens. And so my brain went to space and there was a trilogy that came out in like 2010 called Across the Universe by Beth Revis. And I cried during the first book. Like it definitely has a very realistic ending where a character you love just does not survive. And I was just Mm. absolutely devastated. Spoiler alert. Sorry about that. But um, so in this world, um, you know, earth is crumbling, earth is dying. And so they've created spaceships to send humans to a different planet, but it takes too long for you to get to that planet. Like everybody would die on, on board. So you have to go into these, you know, crypto, whatever pods, and they basically put you in a coma for however many years until you reach your destination, except there's one person awake who is kind of watching over the ship. Mm -hmm. And the story is of how people start to wake up too early. So they're not at the new planet, but they're waking up on the spaceship because the um, something's going wrong. And uh, so they have to try and figure out how to stay alive for the rest of the journey because it's still too far away. Like if they stay awake and don't go back into their coma, they'll be old people by the time they reach the planet and they can't, you know, take care of themselves and populate and expand the human race. Oh, wow. So, yes. If you like sci-fi, again, dystopian can be anything. Dystopian can be sci-fi in space. And the, um, Chris Pratt, and I think it was Jennifer Lawrence, did a similar style movie, although they did mm-hmm. not credit Across the Universe at all for it. I never watched that movie. I heard it was absolutely terrible. So anytime somebody talks about it, I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Read this book instead. <laughs> You're like, like, she no did way. it first. She did it better. <laughs> yeah. They ignore ignore Hollywood. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah, it's true. Because they rely on books so heavily. They don't know what they're doing mm-hmm. anyway. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And if we want to talk like old school and, you know, it's still reveling. Uh, revel- uh, oh, my God. I cannot think of the word. What am I trying to say, Casey? You know what I'm trying to say. Relevant. It's still relevant. Relevant. Lord have mercy. Relevant. Oh my God. Biggest brain fart ever. Anyway. <laughs> um, like the handmaid's tale. Like that's some legit dystopia. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll Not be honest, fun. I can't read it or watch the show without having just like massive panic attacks. So I don't. Girl, like, okay. I, 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 I see this in the news. I can't read it in fiction. Fiction is my escape. Get me out of here. I know. I know. Because like this last season, and I was watching, I was like kind of dealing with it, cringing a little bit, dealing. Mm-hmm. But this last season, I'm like, I just, I just can't do it. I'm not in the headspace to be able to mm-hmm. like consume this and not let it taint my person. You know what I mean? Like infect me yes. with the viciousness. Because <laughs> I was just- yeah would not be good so i haven't gotten into it but you know they have you know the giver i read that a very long time ago um mm-hmm. that was okay you know everyone is forced to read back in high i was school? just gonna say that everyone's forced to read that in high school mm-hmm. and it's not really that bad um but you know uh then they had you know ender's game which mm-hmm. everyone was into for a while So there's a lot of older ones, Mm -hmm. you know, early 2000s, 2010s. I'm trying to think of anything that's Mm -hmm. really recent. I haven't seen anything recent, um, but I haven't really been paying attention either. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, me neither. Hmm. People tagged an ember in the ashes as dystopian. And I think that's more just straight up fantasy than dystopian. Mm -hmm. because you know yes the world is being controlled by the jinn and you know the evil governments and other people are being oppressed but that wasn't 
to me, that didn't read like dystopian. It felt like that was just the fantasy world. So let's see. Dystopia, dystopias are often characterized by a rampant fear or distress of tyrannical governments, environmental disasters, or other characters associated with cataclysmic decline in society. So, yeah. I guess that is a number in the ashes. Yeah. That's why I feel like there's so much, like, you know, that people can do. The Brave New World, Fahrenheit mm-hmm. 4, 451. Those are all, mm-hmm. like, classic I, there's so much I I, you could basically say um, if you want to be technical almost any book where there is like a takeover of the government or <laughs> mm-hmm. all of that could technically fall under this definition oh yes yeah and it can see. take place anywhere it could take place in space it can take place on earth it can take place with vampires it could take place with angels you know yeah that's one of the great things about genre fiction is while you have these certain definitions, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do with romance. You can do whatever the fuck you want to do. You can be on a pirate ship. You can be on a spaceship. Same with dystopian. So that is what I'm hoping um, people realize when they submit suggestions. So you guys, Mm-hmm. Think outside the box. Like, go back to your Goodreads list and look at the stuff you've read. Because trust me, a lot of it is probably fallen out of your memory banks by now. Oh, yeah. No. It's been so damn long. Yeah. So go back in the treasure trove, look at those lists, and see what your favorites were. You know, I recommend a few. that Only, you know, the top ones that you would recommend that others read. Mm-hmm. And uh, get them on to the bracket poll and we'll see who comes out as Victor, as they say in the Hunger Games. <laughs> May the odds ever be in your favor. Yeah. That's how she says it, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, this is also a great resource to kind of get recommendations from each other. Mm-hmm. So while you're giving suggestions or, you know, uh, recommendations to be added to the poll other people are reading those and they're like oh maybe i should check that out because you love it so much to have it on this poll let me look into it Mm -hmm. so it's a great time to share and get some recommendations give us diverse recommendations add books to your own to be read pile or to be read mountain you know whichever one you have the mountain or the pile let's figure out (laughs) The pile. I have a mountain. <laughs> I have a pile nowadays. Um, yeah. You're good. You're good about getting rid of stuff that you don't want to read. I'm just like, well, maybe someday I'll read this. Oh. And then someday never no. comes. I'm cutthroat, man. I'm cutthroat when it comes to just cutting things off. I'm done with you. We're out. We're finished. We broke up. I'm cutthroat like that. <laughs> yes. All right. I think that's it. What do you think, Casey? I think that's it. I think we're good. Okay. All right, you guys. Um, that's it for today. If you'd like to talk with us about this topic or give a recommendation, you can find us both in Shelf Addiction Official. Please join. We'd love to have you. And as always, if you are listening to the sound of my voice right now, I really appreciate you for listening to this entire episode. It means a lot. So take care of yourselves. And until next time, happy reading. Bye, guys. Bye. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like to show your support, there are a few things you can do. Head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a positive five-star review or like this episode on your favorite podcast player. It seems so simple, but it really helps me out. You can share this podcast with other book nerd friends or on your favorite social media space. You can also join the Shelf Addiction Patreon family. For as little as $2 a month, you will help us produce even more awesome content for your ears. You can also consider joining the Shelf Addiction Official Facebook group where we talk all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction Podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. You can also reach us via email at info at shelfaddiction.com. Thank you for listening.